Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead to the week commencing the 14th of November. Quite an interesting week, particularly in the States, where some rather softer than expected inflation data really did draw out the bulls. In fact, some of the most beaten down stocks, such as uh, big tech, saw a 7.4% pop in the NASDAQ on Thursday. Obviously, that leads into hopes that perhaps inflation has peaked and perhaps the Federal Reserve will start some kind of pivot on its aggressive interest rate hike policy. Watch this space, certainly not confirmed, particularly not just on one set of data. Certainly in terms of the UK, it rather looks like we are moving towards the largely expected recession uh, with another negative GDP print coming through, although slightly better than expected. The FTSE 250 has been the index which has really borne the brunt of poor prospects for the UK economy. It's down around 16.5% in the year to date. Despite that very positive session on Wall Street following the inflation print. Uh, the indices do remain down in the year to date. The Dow Jones is currently down by 7%, the S&P 500 by 17%, NASDAQ 29% and the FTSE 100 has just managed to pop its head into positive territory up 0.2% in the year to date. Turning to next week, a couple of big names reporting. We've got half-year numbers due from Burberry. Burberry shares up some 10% over the last year, which is uh, some going for a retailer. Obviously, they're at the luxury brand end of the market, where customers tend to be less influenced by inflationary or indeed recessionary pressures. That being said, working against Burberry has been the lack of Asian tourists in Europe uh, in particular, as well as the lockdown situation in China, which has certainly impacted some of its figures. It does, however, on the other hand, very much um, rely on the brand heat and the various events that it organises to keep its customers, law customers in particular, engaged. And on top of that, of course, uh, there has been a 400 million buyback programme which has underpinned the share price. Also, full year numbers from Imperial Brands. Um, out of favour, obviously, with the ESG investors, but nonetheless, it's been one of those sectors which has been very strong uh, this year on the basis of its defensive quality. Shares are up 34%. On top of that, uh, investors have been rewarded by an ongoing dividend yield of 6.7%. And because of the company's extraordinary cash generation, it's also undertaking a £1 billion share buyback as well. So that ca cash generation, apart from shareholder returns, has also uh, enabled the reduction of some of its net debt. And as usual with any tobacco update, we'll be looking for uh, the latest situation in terms of what it calls next generation products, the likes of vapes and so on. Probably also worth keeping an eye out in the property sector. We've had some uh, mixed news from the house builders recently. Now we move on to the office occupancy, office rental market with half year numbers from British Land and Land Securities. Both shares have struggled over the last year. British Land down 20%, Land Securities down 9%. But for the moment, and as of yet, the dividends remained intact with uh, a couple of healthy yields of just over 5 and 6% respectively. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.